Greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Del Puckett here and I am right in the middle of building this stunning, beautiful cigar box guitar. I found uh, my father's cigars box and um, started treating this thing here. Got some blocks on the inside, but these boxes are awesome. I love the, the detail in them. They're solid, solid construction and beautiful wood too. Um, I ended up doing this uh, treatment for the sound holes where I get the larger saw kind of cut just a little bit and then get the smaller one and then I cut cut the actual hole you know and then took a little file and filed filed to the edges perfect size for the for the pickup there's the box but here, what I wanted to show you was this neck here so this is a an oak neck look how thick that fretboard is so because this this fret, well, this is going to be a four string, and because it's going to be a four string, I needed to make it a super strong neck um, to hold up to the tension of actual four strings, because you know four strings are one string too many. Just kidding. So so this one here is going to a gentleman in Tennessee whose name is Buster. Shout out to Buster, and he wanted to tune like the bottom four strings of a guitar. So we're going to go with the D G B E. So that you can get like your normal D chord like this and, um, you know, like a C chord like that. Anyhow, um, yes, so uh, so I selected and ser searched for and selected these prime choice pieces of oak. And then glued them together. And it's straight as an arrow. Oh my gosh. And then we went with the uh, the medium high frets, of course a jumbo here for the zero. And uh, because it was going to be carved right here, I didn't want this to be like a weakness point, so I went ahead and glued extra material onto the bottom here, so that it can withstand and sustain the string tension. So yeah. This can, this is gonna be a beauty, guys. This is gonna be a beauty. So now what we gotta do is the jack, the volume control, um, the electronics, then the tuners, and then we'll string it up and tune it up and tear it up. So we got these real nice tuners on here. Real nice tuners. So these frets are the medium high frets. They're a little taller than what I'm normally used to. And uh, typically I use this concave tipped, well, it's con on both sides it's concaved. And I would just kind of go over the frets like that. And, um, you know, then sand them and stuff like that. And, you know, of course you're gonna, you're gonna do the quality feel, make sure it's, make sure it's nice, make sure it looks, looks nice as well. Um, but for some reason on this guy here, because the frets were taller, I kept feeling it and it's like, ah, something didn't feel right, something didn't feel right. So I was like, hmm. So I found my old friend, the fret guru. Now this one here has got a smooth side and a tooth side and a smooth side and a tooth side. So what you do is you put the smooth side on the wood material so it doesn't, doesn't do anything. And then you push the tooth side up against the fret. And then you kind of give it a up and over movement. Just one, just just ever so subtle, man. You just kind of you up and over. And I got plenty of videos demonstrating that. But I needed to do that on this on this particular build because this guy wasn't getting all the way down to the bottom there on the on the very very under on the very part right close to the wood. And I could feel it, man. I could feel it. So I went back with the fret guru. And got all those, now, now I'm feeling it, it's like, yeah, okay, that's it. That's right. That's it right there. I can feel it. So, uh, yes, yeah, so now we'll go back and sand them smooth, smooth, smooth. Out. Yeah, yes, look at that. Just look at that. A couple of things to point out is the string spacing. Measure twice, cuss once. So we got 11 sixteenths on every one of those, and it looks damn near perfect. I don't know if you can see that or not, but... 
Um, because every cigar box is different, unique, special, um, you have to kind of you have to kind of go with the flow a lot of times. So we do end up doing just one block on the back, and the other one here, I'm going to just screw it through the sidewall there. And the reason being is because this sidewall is so thick, I might as well take advantage of that. And so I did. Uh, uh, drew my holes and then I recessed it because the cigar box guitar top is going to rest there and I want that screw head to be embedded in there. Same thing with this guy here. Um, can't really see it there, but I do have it recessed so that when the screw goes all the way through, it's below the plane there so that the cigar box top rests flush there. Hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, we're just, we're just flying by the seat of our pants. Getting ready to put in the jack. <clears throat> And there's always the debate. I always find it funny. That's Ampo Jack. No, that's Alpo Jack. Uh, I just call it the Jack. Um, there's only one of them, right? So anyhow, um, the sidewall is th so thick that it bare, it doesn't even quite go all the way through. So I was rooting around in my in my tools, and I I remember seeing these things here. Do you guys have you guys ever used these things? They're just a shaft of looks like like a sanding disc. It's metal. It looks like a file that just rolled up. And then they got them in all different shapes and sizes. Dude, I found this one. <laughs> Looked like a ball and chain thing. Dude, this thing is deadly. Oh my gosh. Well, anyhow, so I, I just started like digging this thing out. And this is brutal, dude. It's like. There's some sawdust flying from this thing. Got to be very careful. Oh my gosh. So I did it on, on both the inside and the outside. Just trying to get it um, so that this, so that the jack could go all the way through and get threads there. So I think that's going to work, man. I think it's going to work. Plus, it's going to give it this cool embeddedness to it, you know? So, yeah. I don't know where I got that, but... They even got these Christmas tree shapies. So, real quick, we have the screw here and the screw here. Pulling it in, and those blocks are just glued in place, perfect height, to get this to be in contact with the top. Now, I wanted this to be open and close, so I'm gonna um, have to whittle away right here where my where my finger's touching, either right here or at the neck right here, so that this guy can can shut. See that's hitting right there. So, just take I'm just gonna take a file and just kind of. Slowly get it so that this thing can open and close properly. So I found a little triangle file and I just started filing right here. And man, I tell you what, man, I'm having to take off quite a bit of material. I've probably filed off about an eighth of an inch already on that thing. Kind of at an angle. Just being careful, I don't want to scratch anything. And every every so often I just double check and make sure it's gonna now I know I know it's good I got it this time good so now we're gonna see here perfect you can't even tell from there real quick I just wanted to show you kind of a little trick so these three holes right here these are the holes for the hinge centered now the one that's here the closest to the bottom I just gonna go Kind of create a little trough for the ground wire to go in so that it goes in underneath the box top. Got the fire ablaze and so I have me a cup of tea. Been a steeping for hours, man. Pretty, uh, pretty strong. We are soldered up. I'm ready to button it up. I just wanted to show you real quick here. So it's just a regular single coil embedded in hot glue. I don't know if you can see that, but it's hot glue. So that sucker ain't gonna go nowhere solid. 
So I have the uh, the red to the input side of the potentiometer. Then the out the output, which is the center tab, goes to the jack. Dink. And everything is grounded. So I'm grounded to the chat to the uh, what do you call it the um, the back side of the potentiometer there. And then I got a little jumper. Now notice the jumper. This is like a thick wire. It's not just like the so I have double redundant extra thick ground wire. And here I got two two wires. I got this this um it's a solid wire, solid piece. And then I also have this braided piece. So I have a a, a backup system on my ground. This we ain't gonna have a problem with this guy at all. But the time to check it is now before you button it up. So I'm gonna double check it right now. We are plugged into the Vox Mini, and turn it on. So right off the bat, hear that static? That static is caused from this guy. Interesting, huh? The uh, Even though that's a battery amp, an electromagnetic field, it's still caused by the, by the ground circuit of that guy. Crazy, huh? All right, um, so, guys, Mojo loves this guy here. Don't you, Mojo? Okay, listen to him sing. buddy give me five mojo <laughs> right. so the pickup centered under the strings i got these nice golden screws here in the corner to match the golden knob to match the golden hardware um oh yeah i wanted to put, so as soon as i put this thing together first off this is solid dude bam mega solid and look how balanced it is, man. It's just, just balanced. It just feel, it just feels so um, balanced, and just uh, I can, I can, I can already feel it now, man. It's just like it's got that vibe. So now we're installing the hinge, and this screw here is going to go into those ground wires. But before I did anything else, before I got too too ahead of myself, see that little line right there. So that little line right there is the where the saddle goes. This is a 24-inch scale instrument, which means it's 12 inches to the double dot, right? 12 inches. That's exactly half. So it's 24 here. So I went ahead and put a little mark underneath the 24-inch so that for future reference, everybody knows where to put that saddle. Because this is a floating saddle. you got to adjust that saddle to get that, those harmonics to line up over the fret so you have good intonation. So yeah, you want you don't want to glue your saddle down because if you do, then you're committed, right? <clears throat> what if it's wrong? What if you change strings, whatever. So it's always good to have, have an idea. Where, that's your reference point. That's where to start. And then uh, part of the setup is setting the intonation where you start tilting those things, moving it back and forth, um, tuning it, stretching the strings, making sure the notes are right, adjusting that. That is setting up the intonation. I do have plenty of videos on that, trust me. <clears throat> but yeah, so uh, I just wanted to, like I said, don't get, hear my chickens? It's the middle of the night and they're, they're cock a doodle -doo So yeah, so I have enough space for my strings to go t from here to there. I just want to make double check, triple check, quadruple check. Too bad I don't have a golden strap button, but I do have a golden screw. That's nice. All right, time for the saddle, the strings. I keep a box of these blanks. They're just a whole bunch of different, different sizes and shapes that I've kind of pre-made just to kind of help me buzz through this particular part of it. So they're typical, just, you know, they're typical. Um, I don't know, this is about maybe a little bit less than a half inch tall. 
Um, I got some of the, the biscuit kind, some experiments. Um, and I just put like a, a fret slot in there and then um, carve them using the sander. But here's the trick, guys. Here's the trick. Once you put the, I, and then I put a fret in it. And here's the trick, guys. Real simple. You just use whatever file you got. I use, I happen to use the, uh, the Guru file here and I just took off the edge because it's going to, it's going to sit right here underneath your hand, right? So you don't, you don't want that thing to be pokey right there. So you just get sandpaper and just rub the snot out of it. And then go back and feel it. Make sure it's nice and smooth. And yeah, you can look at it too. Um, read glass. Spec. Oh yeah. Yippers. All right, Buster, got your name underneath the saddle. So that's proof right there. So I was about ready to put the strings on. Then I realized, crap, my hinge only has three holes in it. So I thought, brilliant idea. How about I'll just retrofit it with two extra ones. I'll keep that third one in there. So in, in the future, guys, in the future, if you ever wanted to make turn this into a three string, all you got to do is just use that center one there because I gave you an extra an extra little uh, spot right there for the three string. So you could use the top one, the middle one, and the bottom one for a three string. Or you can use all of them except for the middle one for the four string. Brilliant! These D'Addario's are really good strings. These are the medium nickel wound. So I'll be using the 11, 14, 18, and 28. So we're tuned like a normal guitar. D, G, B, E. sound yikes all right let's, let's test it out first things first safety we don't want anybody putting an eye out no animals were harmed during the making of this video so what I, what I did is I took the high E and I tuned it down to D so I have a D on the top and the bottom Be good for slide with this tuning. stretching the strings, we're setting our intonation, we're uh, stretching the strings, we're playing, we're tuning again, we're, we're like, uh, what do you call it? We're torturing the cat and the dog. Okay guys, I want to show you a cool trick. So I am tuned D, G, and this is a B. D. <clears throat> but here's the deal. So I did not use the tuner. I did initially, but then I went off of it and I started just using my ear to get these intervals. Your ear should be able to tell when it's in, in tune. And your 
listening for that that juicy sound right If you checked with the tuner, you would be flat. Like this note here. This note here. It would be flat. So you're tuning that, that's a third. And so it's, I mean, as soon as you tune your third a little bit flat, that note gets real juicy. <clears throat> but so now you're gonna have to keep in mind, so it's this, this string here. So whenever I'm playing a note, I'm gonna have to stretch it a little bit because I'm tuned flat, right? So. Watch, watch this finger here. I'm going to stretch it. Same thing here. So you can get it perfect, right? Now, when you get to these chords here, you don't have to tune it because it's already flat. So when it's a straight, straight line like this chord, it's going to be in tune. It's when you do these kind of chords, this is where you're going to have to stretch these guys. <clears throat> Might take a little bit of practice at first. Use your ear. Your ear will tell you when that note's right. You want all the chords to ring juicy like that. hard with this with the tight strings because they got four strings on here so you got to be careful not to not to accidentally touch those other strings when you're playing so they ring out open wow what a responsive responsive guitar All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to do all, all, all five things. Like, share, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell. Um, don't forget there's links in my video description, affiliate links for, for all your uh, cigar box guitar goodies. And I think you, there's also a promo code. Uh, there's ways to support this channel. Um, guys, seriously, um, thank you so much for using my affiliate link. It... Uh, um, it's nice. It's nice to uh, to know that you guys are supporting. Anyhow, that's it for this. Buster, I hope you enjoy this guitar. Um, hope it has many, many, many hoot nannies in it. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.